Welcome to the beautiful region of Le Castellet in the south of France, where Circuit Paul Ricard will host round two of ELMS 2024. This 5.8 kilometer racetrack features many characteristics, including long straights and harsh braking zones. Now, this is a very special weekend. Not only are there 43 cars lining up for the four hours of Le Castellet, it is also the final race before the 24 hours of Le Mans. So let's see what the drivers have to say about the weekend ahead and the biggest endurance race on the calendar. Yeah, I mean, obviously this year, ELMS is a very strong field. Um, a lot of good drivers, a lot of good teams still here. Especially now ELMS is the dominant LMP2 category and championship to be in, so um, the competition's great. In the second round of the season in, in quite a short championship overall. Um, we, we personally are looking to continue our success that we had in Barcelona. Um, and with such a strong grid, you can't afford to drop any points. So, yeah, I think every race will be will be uh, a difficult one. But for us, we need to continue the success. We have a lot of morale and uh, looking to get back into it in round two. Sports car racing is quite fun with the traffic and everything involved. It's always exciting while you're driving, no boring laps. Obviously being the main event in European races is quite nice because even when you're in Formula 2, you always have the secondary paddock being the main event here is quite nice and it's very crowded. Obviously it's a superstar lineup. You look at the field, everyone's, everyone's very talented, incredibly quick. I think anyone is. Um, if you're certainly on the back foot like we were after race one, um, unfortunately we were out of the race quite quickly uh, with some contact. But um, you know you need to take points at every race. I believe somewhere in the top four or five um, uh, would put you in a great position. But um, there will be people who will be trying to be consistent. It will be people trying to make up ground. And I think uh, when you come to race two already on such a short break, you want to maximise as much as you can. Um, the final race before Le Mans, so we might have one test before, but you won't have any potential qualifyings or anything like that before Le Mans. So yeah, there's a lot of prep here, um, getting back into it. It's nice to have a race, you know, this close before Le Mans. It's, it's not far away, which is exciting. really important to try to get um, as many kilometers as possible before uh, the big event. I think uh, it's going to be a challenging, uh, challenging race but a lot of fun at the same time. One driver who is brand new here in European Le Mans Series this year is Arthur Leclerc. Now he hails from single seaters, is an F1 development driver for none other than Scuderia Ferrari and is now here in LMP2. Now we know he's comfortable on board a car, but is he comfortable on board a plane? Let's find out. It's really pleasing to drive uh, in high speed. It's still a car that is pushing quite well. I always uh, love adrenaline. Um, I always love extreme sports. So obviously, uh, yeah, I would like to discover new worlds and uh, new uh, extreme sports.
come and see my stump. Nice. <laughs> Here we are. <laughs> Oh, it's looking great. What's the weight of this thing? It's uh, 525 kilos. Yeah, top speed? Top speed 170 okay. kilometers. Oh, that's cool. I still have some control of the plane. So if... Yeah. Yeah, don't mind if we do looping at some point. Yeah. <laughs> no, no problems. So you ready to go? Of course I am. My feeling um, is... Yeah, there is a lot of wind. Uh, I was taking like, yeah, the, the wind was blowing quite a lot already uh, on the ground. So I was wondering what, what will happen in the, in the air. Uh, yeah, I don't know what to expect. Where is the parachute, that is? Over there on the right. Ah, okay. There is something that says we off light. So we move yep. it. Là, on voit pas grand chose, tu vois, mais c'est normal. C'est comme ça que les pionniers. Euh, voilà, si on veut voir quelque chose, on est obligé de tourner un peu à gauche. D'accord. Et tourner un petit peu à droite pour voir mieux. <rire> <rire> voilà, non. comme dans les années 30. And that's for seatbelt. Is your seatbelt on? Yes. And your doors close, both of them? Yes. I close mine. And we are ready to go. Victor Victor, l'alignement, le décollage 30, discrétion 290 degrés, 14 heures. Ok, on y va. T'es prêt Ready Yes, I am. Ah ouais, let's go. Yes. My heart rate that went a bit up, uh, especially for the landing, because it was moving a lot. So, so thank you for flying with the Airborne One Riviera. Bah, and, thank uh, you so much. It's a pleasure thank to you have you on board. <laughs> yeah, and hopefully uh, one day uh, we'll fly together. <laughs> yes, we better bring it back inside the hangar, otherwise it's going to blow away. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, obviously I would like to be a pilot in this kind of plane. Uh, it's taking a bit of time, but uh, I wish once uh, I will have the time to take, uh, to take and try to pass the driving li flying license. <laughs> yeah. Now, LMP2 may have found its new home here in ELMS for 2024, but quite literally, the home of LMP2 is here in Le Castellet. The cars are built at Areca, which is located just behind the track. So let's take a peek inside the factory, shall we? This LMP2 is, is basically the heart of, uh, of Oreca. If you see any single uh, employee of Oreca, he has put his hand, he has put his some hours onto this, uh, onto this car.
An LMP2 is very simple, it's uh, LMP like Le Mans prototype 2 because when it has emerged it was, to, it was to be the category just below the LMP1 and this was back in 2017 and basically what we, um, what we did is we spent something like uh, 12 to 18 months studying the car, making sure we get the right concept uh, because the really big importance from that car was to be very performant and basically what happened now since we have that car that is um, uh, frozen in terms of uh, uh, technical specification we, we have somehow um, two weeks uh, to build the car. These cars are, are mainly uh, are built around carbon uh, composite, so there's quite a lot of uh, knowledge we put into this car to make basically all the structural parts that, that must be strong. Uh, obviously light, because if you want to have a quick car, you, you need to have a light car. Every single part has been handmade, so it needs to be identical, and that's why we rely on quite a lot of persons uh, in Oreca that have got this, this uh, knowledge. Clearly, uh, for this kind of car, the carbon is the key, a key factor of the performance. We can because we can uh, we can achieve a very good property and with a very low uh, weight. And for us, it's the main point for this kind of uh, parts. Here, here uh, we can uh, have a look about the front cover of the Oreca O7. I don't know how you say that in English, but uh, we call it in uh, in French millefeuille because you know it's, uh, there, are, there are a lot of uh, steps, a lot, uh, lot of different carbons that we need to use in order to, uh, to obtain the right uh, property of this part. Uh, for this one, I'm using uh, four different uh, types of carbon. Any car that we uh, build uh, here in Oreca uh, and we get out of the workshop is, is actually checking down. So every single time we go to um, uh, what we call a driving center in, in Le Castellet where we run out with the car making sure every system is, uh, is running okay. And this car has made the, uh, basically the reputation of, uh, of Oreca. This is a quick car, this is a light car, this is a car like uh, that any teams, any driver like and we all like this car and we, we we would like to see it more and more in the future. Race time is fast approaching, but before they head into battle, there's a chance for the thousands of fans to see the drivers and cars up close, to collect some autographs and maybe to grab a selfie. Le Castellet is absolutely rammed with excited spectators, all eager to see the action in round two of the European Le Mans series. I came to ball, lose the draw. In LMGT3, Sarah Bovey claimed her second pole position of the season with the number 85 Iron Dames Porsche. In LMP3, Gail Julien was the fastest man in the number 23 RLR M Sport machine.
Sergio Roda claimed pole in the LMP2 Pro-Am with the number 77 Proton Competition Orica. And the field will be led away by the number 28 from EDEC Sports, Jop van Eytert, setting the fastest time of all in qualifying. Leading car has left the track. Leading car has left the track. It exports Paul Lafargue leads them to the line here in Le Castellet. We are ready to go green. We have started the four hours of Le Castellet. The start is under investigation. They stream down into turn one. Paul Lafargue with a good, clear air around him. He turns in. Johnny Edgar, AO by TF, in second place. Little wee from Edgar. Tires cold, couple of cars having to cut the corners. They don't make it through safely. LMP2, LMP2 Pro Am, LMP3, and there is the GT3 leader. The Iron Dames Porsche remains in front. Looked like a very clean start by the Castellet standards. Not bad from this huge field. Oh, trouble for Tony Wells. He gets turned around in the Team Virage car. Everybody looks like they should avoid him. Duncan Cameron's Ferrari going around the outside of Sara Bovi. Looks like he might take the GT3 lead. He has. United Auto Sports blue car. Philip Ugran on the inside line, holding off David Heinemeyer Hansen for sixth position. Jonas Reed under pressure for third. The yellow highlights on the Proton competition car. Christian Reed's young son hanging on there and David Heinemeyer Hansen under pressure. The Vector Sport car has got by him, so change of place for seventh. That's Ryan Cullen in the white car with the black and red. Runs off track. There's the Vector car into Europol as well. Luca Giotto, he's worked his way through there. And Heinemeyer Hansen coming back at him. But the yellow and green of Luca Giotto will come out to the final corner just narrowly in seventh place. Then David Heinemeyer Hansen, then Vector Sports Ryan Cullen. Manuel Maldonado is right behind them. And look for the yellow and green. Giotto hogging the inside line, keeps his nose in front. With the orange highlights, Sam Bullock Basie. That's the second place car in LMP2 Pro Am DKR Engineering chasing John Fout, the white car with the red highlights. That's Nielsen and Giorgio Rosa in the 77 Proton competition car in third. And here is Duncan Cameron on the right of your shot, pulling out of the slipstream. Sara Bovi trying to retake the lead in GT3 into senior. She does so. Cameron got by in the traffic confusion behind the spinning Virage car on lap one. Now she's back in the lead. Trouble in the final corner, Virage Dupont. That's Alexander Bukantsov in the inter Europol car, one of the inter Europol cars. He's got himself going back in the correct direction again as the GC3 field streams by. Here's Jonas Reed in third place. Lorenzo Fluxer for cool racing. 
tracking his every move down the long Mistral straight. He's not going to get by into Senior. That's covered off by Jonas Rees. But he's right in the toe. And down into Dublin Dwight de Bosse. All over the back of the young German driver who drifts out a little wide. And through on the inside goes Lorenzo Flutzer. He's up to third place. Philip Bulgrand challenging around the outside. The red and blue United Autosports car. And if he can stay there, that becomes the inside line now into the final couple of corners. And he too eases his way by Jonas Reed. Jonas Reed under pressure now from Luca Giotto in the Inter Europol car, the green and yellow. The black car with the yellow flashes, that's the Iron Lynx Proton machine of Jonas Reed. Keeps his nose alongside, but loses the corner there. And he is down to sixth. Here's the LMP3 leader, another good showing by Torsten Kratz in the WTM by Rinaldi Racing Machine. Currently has over a three second lead at the head of the field. Race leaders at senior once more. It exports Paul Lafargue from pole position, leading fellow front row starter Johnny Edgar. The white and red AO by TF Sport Car. Been chasing Paul Lafargue since the start of the race. Now he lunges down the inside into the final corner. Grabs the lead. What a good move. Very good job, Johnny. Now we look forward. He's going to have to keep an eye on Paul Lafargue in his mirrors as well. He is right there in second. Oh, there's trouble for Duquesne. And that's Niels Kolen, the Dutch driver. On board with Manuel Maldonado. There is the Duquesne car right in front of us. And he just carries in too much speed. Jonas Reed under pressure for six now from Inter Europol's Sebastian Alvarez. Jonas Reed weaving down the straight to try and break the toe. Alvarez comes alongside him into senior. Can he get his nose in front, side by side? Jonas Reed braves it out on the inside line. And that was brave stuff as well from Alvarez. If Reed had had a problem, Alvarez would have been the one who got collected and taken off. Oh, and now he squeezed his way through. Alvarez up to six from 12th on the grid. Leader in LMP3 now with real pressure from behind. Euro International's Matt Bell has scythed into that three point something second lead. And it is now down to half a second. Leaders in traffic. LMP2 battle for second place. Paul Lafargue and Lorenzo Fluxo. Lafargue with the gold nose. Fluxo with the grey highlights comes through on the inside. Cool Racing looking to take second place from Edex Sport. Wheel to wheel. Up behind the green Lamborghini of Hiroshi Hamaguchi. And on the inside, that's a good choice. Lorenzo Fluxer gets the tight line through onto the main straight. And Paul Lafar getting held up again on the exit of Virage Dupont. Loses ground. Here is the view of Philip Ogran from United Auto Sports. He goes by Hamaguchi as well. And his targets are right in front. There he is, the blue car with the red highlights. On board again with Ogran. That's Duncan Cameron's Ferrari. And the uh, second and third place cars have just gone through and Paul Lafar gets a run on the inside, goes back by Lorenzo Fluxer. So the blue and gold car, Paul Lafar for Edex Sport back up to second. We're in fourth place. There's the third place car right in front. And into Europol are behind in fifth and sixth. Replay on the Mistral, Jonas Reed in traffic. Oh, bounces over the unused chicane entrance. There's James Dayson for RLR M Sport, getting himself going again. This is how seventh in GT3 changed. Mike Wainwright down the inside into the final corner, sneaks by Johnny Larson. On the Mistral with Philip Borgran right in front of us is Paul Lafargue in the NX Sport car. We're going by the battle for the lead in LMP3, by the way. And there is Lafargue with the gold highlights. Ugran on the inside. This is for second place. United drivers had a good opening stint. So too has Paul Lafargue, who started the race from pole position. He's down to third. There's Lorenzo Fluxer in fourth. Coming by the GT3 battle, Lorenzo Fluxer looking to the inside of Paul Lafargue. He got a good run down the straight. Lafargue was slightly held up by the GT cars, and that's how positions change. Fluxer up to third place, Lafargue down to fourth. I rather sense Paul Lafargue will see that as a temporary setback, not his fault, got held up in traffic. 
All going on in the battle of the second in GC3. Duncan Cameron under pressure from Hiroshi Hamaguchi. And the Lamborghini driver goes down the inside. Tucks through into second place. LMP3 leader under pressure into senior. Matt Bell on the inside. Torsten Kratz on the outside. Who's coming out of this one best? Kratz is on the curbs, loses a tiny bit of traction. And Matt Bell for Euro International has the lead briefly. Kratz comes right back down the inside. He's back in front. Fantastic racing from these two experienced LMP3 stars. And it might be another chance for Matt Bell because the leaders are coming up behind them. And that often gives you an opportunity as it disturbs the rhythm of the car in front. Duncan Cameron facing the wrong way. He's had a spin now, was there contact? He was battling with Hiroshi Hamaguchi's Lamborghini. The Duquesne LMP2 car goes off in avoidance. He shouldn't be making those mistakes where they're waved at yellows. That's towards the end of the lap for Duncan Cameron. First round of pit stops. This is Lorenzo Flusa in a cool racing. Came in from third place. There's AO by TF's Johnny Edgar, the race leader. And Luca Giotto for Inter Europol on the main straight, yellow and green. That's the danger for Flusa. And it looks like Luca Giotto gets his nose in front. LMP3 leader Matt Bell up at senior. And that's contact with Derek De Boer in the racing spirit of Le Mans, Aston Martin. Tiniest of touches there. They both avoid disaster. Here's the battle for the race lead. Johnny Edgar ahead of Luca Giotto and Lorenzo Flusa in third place. Green and yellow there is Luca Giotto. Red and white. That's the AO by TF car of Johnny Edgar, the race leader. Oh, gets pinched by the Porsche right at the apex there. The door closed. That held him up a little. Just where you don't want to lose momentum. GC3 leaders in the pits. This is the Iron Dames Porsche. New left front for Sara Bovi. Luca Giotto onto the Mistral, right behind Johnny Edgar. This is the battle for the lead. They've dropped Lorenzo Flusso behind them. The cool racing car is still in third, but not close enough to take advantage. Luca Giotto with the slipstream comes around the outside up to Senior. But that allows Johnny Edgar a chance perhaps to try and counter attack. Not quite enough space. Giotto has the lead for Inter Europol. Paul Lafargue and Philip Ugran started in close company, have been racing in close company, now battling for fifth position. Ugran for United Auto Sports. Riding on board with Ugran in front is John Hartshorn's Ferrari, the JMW Motorsport car. And that may pay a part here. Yes, it does look. Paul Lafargue getting really badly held up onto the Mistral. Philip Ugran taking candy from a baby just when you want to nail the throttle onto the straight. The Inexport car held up by the GT3 machine. Now he's got to try and tow his way back alongside. He is there. Who's going to be bravest into senior? Philip Ogran hangs on to fifth for United Autosports. There's Robert Kubica, ready to take over the AO by TF car. And there is trouble. That's John Falp. Nielsen Racing was third in LMP2 Pro-Am. There's the LMP2 Pro-Am leader, Sem bullock Basie, in the DKR engineering machine. DKR so experienced in LMP3 and now doing a great job in LMP2 as well. Battle for 11th place in LMP2. The second Edex Sport car, Rashad de Gerus. With the gold nose coming around the outside of Vladislav Lomko. Can't quite squeeze through there at senior, but now he's going to try and cut back on the inside. Not quite close enough. All Japanese battle for second in GT3. The yellow car, the car guy driver, Takeshi Kimura in the Ferrari for Kessel Racing. Right behind him, somewhere there, is... Hiroshi Hamaguchi, Hamaguchi coming around the driver's right. He's being eased over onto the curbs. This is brave stuff from Hamaguchi. All the way down the straight, two wheels on the curbs. Kimura giving him just enough room to survive. But Hamaguchi is still there, still there. Kimura takes the racing line. Hamaguchi takes second. Nice work, Hiroshi, nice work. That was great stuff from Hiroshi Hamaguchi. The Kessel Racing driver Takeshi Kimura did not make that easy. 
Pit stop for the LMP2 Pro Am class leaders. Tim Bullock Basie handing over to Lawrence Hoare. Leader in the pits, and Robert Kubitzer now in the driver's seat has taken over from Johnny Edgar. The British driver's in a great stick for AO by TF. Lorenzo Flusa makes way for Rotomo Miata at Cool Racing. Pulling out to the slipstream at the back of the picture is Robert Kubica. Behind Rashad Dejeris in the Edex Sport car. He's now alongside him. Dejeris getting a toe as well from the Nielsen engineering machine. But Kubica on the racing line. He's going to go by Dejeris for third position. Yes, he does. And that shows just how quickly the Nielsen Pro-Am car right in front of him was going down the straight. Julian Gerby in the yellow car challenging for fourth in LMP3 inside Alexander Matschul. Oh, that's very close. Gets by the DKR engineering car. On board view from R2 Leclerc, Nicola Pino nailing Julian Gerby's LMP3 car, spinning him round. Great four way battle for eighth place here. Frederick Vesti for Cool Racing ahead of the red, white, and black as Stefan Richelmi Vector Sport. Then with the yellow highlights, Masio Capietto ahead of Fabio Scherer's United Auto Sports car. And a drive through penalty, Robert Kubitz will have to serve it. His AO by TF teammate Johnny Edgar earning it for passing outside track limits. Stefan Richelmi under pressure in the final corner. Marcel Capietto throws the Iron Lynx Proton car down the inside. Richelmi runs out very wide. And through goes Fabio Scherer, the United Auto Sports 23. Now he's attacking the Iron Lynx Proton car as well. Fantastic stuff here for ninth place. United around the outside into the first corner. Can't get through. Robert Kubitz is serving his drive through. He'll be frustrated, but these things do happen. Racing is racing, and occasionally you end up just a fraction over the wrong side of the white line. On board with Artur Leclerc, remember when he was up in the stamp, he saw cars exceeding track limits? Well, the stewards see those as well. And there's another drive through penalty, this time for 77. That's the Proton competition car that leads in Pro Am in LMP2. Trouble for Kessel Racing. Esteban Masson brought the car in with an issue, and that looks like it might be terminal. Leader in the pits into Europol, and this is Vladislav Lomko making his stop. Fuel only at this stage, and it'll be the same here at Algar Pro. Oli Caldwell, drinks bottle being topped up, I think. Debris on the track on the Mistral. At the speeds they're doing here, that'll rip off any loose bodywork. Battle for fourth place in GT3. Ricardo Pera tucked in behind the similar Ferrari of Duncan Cameron. Cameron in the Spirit of Race machine. Ricardo Pera for GR Racing. GR spent so long racing with Porsches. This Ferrari is new to them this season. They've done a great job so far. And Ricardo Pera goes right around the outside to take fourth. Race leader in the pits. Cool Racing still in front in LMP2. And overall, this is Rutomo Miata. Fuel for the car and a drink for the driver and a clean screen. And that should cycle the 43 into Europol car. That car right there back into the lead for Vladislav Lomko. Battle is on though. Cool racing on their way down the pit road at 80 kilometers an hour. But Vladislav Lomko comes by into Europol. Have the race lead. Cool in second position and Edex Sport still in third. All Ferrari battle for sixth place in GT3 behind the number 12 LMP3 car. That's Manu Collard for AF Corsa, the white and black car, but we ride on board with Formula Racing's Conrad Larsen. Oh, just about keeps it on the island as he goes through on the inside. Trouble for Team Virages. Bernardo Pinheiro looks like he's had a little spin at the end of the lap. Gets going again. And this is Kay Askey for Inter Europol, rolls out of the final corner and comes to a grinding halt in the pit lane entrance. Three, two, one, virtual safety car. We are under virtual safety car. Well, that means everybody comes down to 80 kilometers an hour, but the pit lane remains open and that's a good break. Oliver Gray handing ever to Clement Novelak in the Inter Europol number 34 machine. 
The virtual safety car gives everybody a chance to stop Leonard Weiss in the pits as well. That's the LMP3 leader. We are under safety car. We are under safety car. All cars pick up the pace. Leader slow down. We are under safety car. So after two laps of virtual safety car, the actual safety car comes out, but there's trouble for WGM by Rinaldi. The LMP3 leaders have just been in the pits and Leonard Weiss has stopped. Back to green flag racing, cool racing at the head of the train. Everybody else jumbled up in traffic, but cool Edex Sport and into Europol. That's your one, two, three overall. They're the first cars in the queue. They go green and they will get an advantage because their rivals were behind the GT3 machinery and that slowed them coming across the start line. Riding on board in the midst of the action, the 22 United Auto Sports car is Ben Hanley. In front is Clement Novelak, and then in front of him, Louis Delatraz, AO by TF Sport. This is the battle for fourth position now in LMP2. And you can see on the leaderboard that the gaps are tidy because they've all been compressed behind the safety car. Riding on board with Ben Hanley. There's the battle for second place. Marty Jakobsen leads ahead of Jot van Eiter, and that's Tom Dillman in the green and yellow of Inter Europol. We've got a new leader in LMP2 Pro-Am as well. Here he is. This is Matthias Besch, the Richard Mille by TDS Racing Machine. And of course, another of the Orica 07 chassis that have become the dominant force in LMP2. Battle for second place. Tom Dillman for Inter Europol, trying to get around the outside of Jot van Eitert, becomes the inside, keeps his nose there. Oh, and the LMP3 machine just denies him the chance, but it's not going to help van Eitert either. Van Eitert a little slow onto the straight. Tom Dillman with a little bit more momentum, but no room to manoeuvre. He's going to have to try and go around the long way into turn one. This is a great battle between these two. And Jot van Eitert keeping the Edex Sport machine just in front for the moment. Battle for third in NMGT3. We see the Aston Martin racing Spirit of Le Mans, Casper Stevenson, right behind Ricardo Perra in the GR racing machine. There is Perra. Look at the way the bonnet bounces around in the turbulence behind the Ferrari. Gets a great move in the slipstream, comes alongside and squeezes through. This is a big bunch of GT3 traffic. Iron Dames and Iron Lynx currently 1-2 with less than an hour to go. Here's the top three. Malti Jakobsen for Cool Racing going very slowly at the end of the lap. Through go Edex Sport and into Europol. Jakobsen rolls the car off the side of the track. That's a disaster for the young Dane and for Cool Racing. They look to have the race pretty much under control. What a heartbreak. What's happened? Iron Dames in the pits. Final stop. Michelle Gatting takes over from Rahal Frey. Race lead. Jop van Eitert for Edex Sport. Yellow and green right behind him. Tom Dillman. This is for everything. But we are about to go full course yellow. 15 seconds. Full course yellow is deployed in 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Full course yellow. Full course yellow. Again, all the battles suspended everybody down onto the 80 kilometer an hour limiter. It's how quickly you slow and how quickly you release it legally that can make a difference. Three, two, one. Full course yellow removed. Pit entry is open. Thank you. They go back to green. The leaders just onto the Mistral straight. So no advantage there as they come up to speed. Edex Sports, Jop van Eutert weaving to try and make sure he's got temperature in the tyres when he gets to senior. Tom Dillman sitting right behind him. Knighton covering a little more distance and Dillman throws it into the inside. Big move from Tom Dillman to take the lead away from the restart. In the pits from third place, this is Kama Novelak. Interpol having such a strong race. 
Andrea Caldarelli taking over from Axel Jeffries in the Iron Lynx Lamborghini. Louis Delatraz in the pit lane from fourth for AO by TF. Michelle Gatting battling for fourth place with the Aston Martin of Valentin Asseclo. The pink Iron Dames Porsche all over the back of them should have won in the season opener in Barcelona. And a bizarre random loose wheel nut put them out. And the Iron Dames with a lot to do here. The final round of pit stops, 35 minutes to go. Michelle Gatting in the slipstream of Valentin Asseclo. She's going to go the long way around the outside into Senior and look at the speed advantage the tow gives you. Like DRS in Formula One. Now has the Clow on the inside and he braves it out under braking. The LMP2 machinery did not put him off. That was the United Auto Sports car coming through. P2 and P3 cars either side of Michelle Gatting. Race leaders are in. Into Europol and EDEC both make their final stops. Tom Dillman, there's Jop van Eitert. Left front tyre going on. Michelle Gatting ahead of the Aston, but not for long. Here comes Valentin Asseclo back on the inside. Squeezes back past for fourth place. The team might have told her to give that position back, and here's why. On the straights, as the close shuts the door, getting committed with speed, but goes outside track limits as she makes the pass. Davide Rigon for GR Racing, Andrea Caldarelli right behind him. The battle of two very experienced Italian drivers. Both have got long histories with the brands that they're racing for here. Davide Rigon, a long-time factory Ferrari driver. Ditto Andrea Caldarelli, who's been racing Lamborghinis in GT racing for ages. RLR M Sports, Bailey Voisin trying to pass the two of them and makes a mistake on the inside, on the kerbs. Loops it into a half spin. Looks like no damage done. No, no. That's Clement Novelak in the 34 into Europol car. That's come to a grinding halt. Same as Marty Jakobsen, same as into Europol's 88 car. Now Tom Dillman leads, but the team must be very worried now. What's going on? In 30 seconds, we're going full course yellow. Cool Racing's dark car, Paul-Luc Chatin makes the pass on Louis Delatraz for fourth place on the straight. Full course yellow, full course yellow, start finish straight, bear totally left, exiting T14 please. Start finish, bear totally left, exiting T14. Final stop for Cool Racing's number 17 car, the LMP3 leader Manuel Espirito Santo. That's him out of the door, heading over to Cedric Ultramar. So the new LMP3 leader for RLR M Sport is Gael Julien. Car 28 has 10 seconds added to the next pit stop for excessive zigzagging and blocking another car. The driver gets a penalty point. Looping spin for Cedric Altamar, the Swiss in the cool racing car. Was in fifth place in LMP3. That won't have helped the tyres much. Battle for second place inside the final five minutes. United also sports Ben Hanley under real pressure from Jop van Eitert. And the Edex Sport driver getting a great drive off the final corner. Coming alongside, he's got the advantage, but Hanley is a really tough competitor. Van Eyck is going to have to be very brave around the outside. He is, holds it all together, up to second. Ben Hanley struggling for speed, clearly in the number 22 United Auto Sports car. Here comes Paul-Luc Chatin in the 47 car from Cool Racing, straight by him. Hanley did not get the speed onto the straight. For fourth place now, Ben Hanley. Louis Delatraz, AO by TF, coming right by him. And this will take United Auto Sports 22 car, not just off the podium, but out of fourth position as well. Really tough for Ben Hanley. The car just does not have the pace in the final few minutes. Last lap of the race for Tom Dillman, an into Europol competition. The car has kept going, unlike two of its teammates. Cool Racing third, Edex Sport in second. 
but a big lead for Tom Dillman as he heads towards the chequered flag. First win of the season for Inter Europol in LMP2. They claim victory in the four hours of Le Castellet. <laughs> A big win for Inter Europol competition, winning in Pro Am, Richard Mill by TDS. The LMP3 victory going to RLR M Sports number 15 car. And in LMGT3, it's a big win for Spirit to Race. The Ferrari tops the pile. Only five of the 43 starters weren't classified as finishers, but two of those were from Inter Europol. The good news to that bad news is their remaining car won the race. First of all, I was feeling uh, quite bad after the, the bad quali, but uh, to start 12 and, and win the race was unexpected. We had great race pace, uh, good strategy, uh, and it looked like we could have done a, a one-two. So. Testament to the, the job the team did. Uh, it's a shame we, we couldn't get the one-two with the bad luck of the sister car, but yeah, for us, it was a great day. A real day of mixed emotions for the proud team from Poland as they win from Cool Racing and AO by TF. And the 43 crew now top the points from United's 22 and the 37 car from Cool Racing. <laughs> In LMP2 Pro-Am, victory went to the number 29 car, Richard Mill by TDS. Gregor Sosi, Matthias Besch and Rodrigo Sales, the driving combination. The field in LMP2 Pro-Am is just insanely competitive and uh, the whole team did a fantastic job and it just, it means a lot to, uh, to win in this series just given the level of competition. So yeah, it's, it's fantastic. Behind the winners, Proton Competition taking second, 21 from United Autosports grabbing third, and Richard Mill by TDS now lead the standings by six from AF Corsa with Proton in third. RLR M Sports number 15 crew claimed the win in LMP3. Michael Jensen, Nick Adcock and Gail Julian. To win at this level is so, so special. Um, and we've put a great team together and uh, Gail has driven so, so well. We just, uh, the car's been great from the, from the get-go and to win, I, I'm just lost for words. I'm so, so happy. Behind them, the number four car from DKR Engineering in second with Ultimate's number 35 crew in third spot. That win means the RLR M Sports 15 crew now head the standings, but the top five teams are covered by just 11 points. Another big result for a small team in LMGT3, Spirit of Races Ferrari claimed victory. Duncan Cameron, David Perel, and Matt Griffin. It was a really hard race. Um, Duncan was had amazing qualifying, was going really good in uh, in the race, and he got turned around in the opening stint, so we lost 55 seconds. So then we had just had to alter the strategy. Um, I went in second, which is a normal. Uh, we changed things around. The team did a mega job on strategy, and the main thing was each of us were really fast, and when you're fast, you can kind of make things happen. So the Ferrari took the top step of the podium ahead of the Lamborghini of Iron Lynx and the Aston Martin of Racing Spirit of Le Mans. And that also means that Spirit of Race are just two points ahead of their Lamborghini rivals at the top of the standings in LMGT3. Another thrilling round of the European Le Mans series comes to its conclusion here. And all thanks to the circuit Paul Ricard Le Castellet for playing hosts. <laughs>
Round three of the European Le Mans series will be at the Autodromo Enzo Adino Ferrari in Imola in Italy in mid-July. We will see you there.